Now it is a self-leveling coating. You see this mattness right here? Well, that's what we started with. Here's what we ended up with right here. I mean, let's look at this glossiness, this mirror that I'm standing right in front of right here. Look how nice and clean that gets that. Beautiful. We're gonna go ahead and finish cleaning this gel coat up with our HDO blue pad. You know, again, for the age of this boat and considering how I use it, I only do this about once a year. Basically what I'm doing here is just making sure I'm cleaning all that stuff off. I'm not really looking to correct anything necessarily. There's my process. Four passes, NSP95 on the HDO blue, we're good to go. I'm gonna go more product on so I can cover more areas. You'll notice when I'm working in these smaller areas, not reloading all the time, and when I am reloading, it's not a lot. At this point, I've done that whole side of the I've done the whole side of the hull. So really, there's so much product on this pad. Because remember, the beautiful thing that we have right here is, you know, the product sits on top of the pad. Uh, so that way, we're keeping it between the pad and the gel coat. Uh, so you know, all this product now that we have sitting on top of this pad, I know I have enough in here that you know I can do these little areas without having to add a ton more product. All right, polishing step nearly complete. Now again, folks, let's keep in something in mind here. This boat has 400-ish hours on it. Uh, I think it's just over, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, 2007 is the year. So I'm never expecting this hull to be perfect. It wasn't perfect when I bought it, and that's why I like the boat, is because it is perfectly imperfect. Ooh, look at this, that one popped back out. Oh, look at that, right back in. So let's take a quick walk around and review what we got uh, accomplished here. So corrected the entire hull from rub rail to water line. All right, everybody, finally time. We've gotten there, we've done our, all our preparation work, and now we can finally talk about Boat Coat Pro. So really excited to get into the marine industry with some uh, protection uh, and some nanotechnology-based 
protection at that. This is a really wonderful product. Also, marine life safe, which you know I like to stress a lot. I am a fisherman, obviously, judging by the boat that I have behind me. When I go out fishing, I, I prefer the fish to have the appropriate number of fins and gills and everything else. So I'd rather us not introduce things that are going to harm marine life. One of the other advantage of this product is it's going to give you much easier maintenance. So whether you keep it on a lift, if you trailer it, you know, your end of trip, end of day kind of wash down procedure is going to be tremendously easier and a lot less effort. Of course, it's also going to be contaminant resistant. So this is when we talk about anti-fouling. Now, granted, if you you know put your boat on a buoy and it just sits there, you know, all season long and you don't really hardly use it, you know, at a certain point you're going to end up with all sorts of zebra mussels and other all other sorts of uh, marine life fusing themselves to your gel coat. But uh, in the case that you are actually using and maintaining your boat, you know, this is going to help ward off that kind of uh, contamination. In addition to, you know, making your maintenance easier and generally keeping the boat looking well, I mean, let's talk about the technology that we're employing here. So unlike a automotive clear coat, gel coats are porous. But you want to talk about, you know, peaks and valleys, which we can, you know, we can relate to at Dr. Beasley's because we know a thing or two about bonding to structures that have peaks and valleys, similar to, I don't know, let's say mesh paint on a car. Here we're talking similar technology, but in the fact that what we're actually doing is we're providing that layer of nanotechnology that's going to become part of that gel coat and help seal that gel coat so we can keep, again, any of those contaminants or, or any of that marine life from kind of getting into those little nooks and crannies in this gel coat. When it comes to application, we do give you an eight ounce glass bottle nice how far is that going to go that's always the million dollar question of course that's going to depend on you know size of the boat you know and, oh i got a 20 foot boat well, a 20 foot boat can mean a lot of different things is it a bass boat we got draft about this about this much draft not a lot of fiberglass above the water line or is it something like this where we got a lot of fiberglass from the water line to the bow line so that's going to affect how much coating we're going to need. Uh, also, I mean, generally just how thirsty is it? You know, some gel coats are going to be more thirsty than others. It just tends to go that way. But I expect to be able to coat this entire boat with about half this bottle, probably less than that. And all honesty, if I wanted, if you want to be a little bit more efficient with it. As far as the application, uh, we are carrying the uh, applicator, the coating saver. So the cool thing is that actually, if you take a cross section of these, you'll see that they're actually lined on the inside. So this way, when I put the coating onto this, it's just so in just to the microfiber exterior it's not going to soak into the foam that's inside the sponge so we're not going to waste any product so of course like anything shake well i'm going to prime the pad two three four five six seven i want to get fairly generous with it and then you know if you want to go mr miyagi style or you want to go cross hatch whatever you want to do go for it it's all just about making sure you have total coverage. Now it is a self-leveling coating, so I'm not worried about leveling necessarily. It is an instant bonding coating, so it'll start to be effective as soon as we put it to the substrate. But however, like any of our other coatings, we're going to want to follow the same guidelines of one hour undisturbed, 24 to 48 hours dry, and two weeks no washing. Now, of course that's usually has to do more with automotive in mind at that point. You know, it's always hard to judge, you know, two weeks, no washing, you know, okay, not hard on a boat, but you know, really what we're trying to do here is the idea is like, you know, the loaf of bread is just not fully baked, okay? After that first 24 hours, we got a nice crust, so it's not a big deal to get some rain on or this and that, but you know, we haven't until at least a week or so, we haven't gotten to the point where, you know, it's all the way through where it can take you know, friction of having someone, you know, pressure and put, you know, that kind of pressure and friction on it. So I would recommend, and I'm gonna keep my boat out of the water for 24 hours. So go ahead and grab a towel. And you have an extremely long working time. So again, depending on your environment, but you're gonna be able to see, you're gonna have long areas. Now, if you wanna push it and push farther and do larger swaths of fiberglass, you know, that's not a problem. You can, and I'm gonna demonstrate, surely how far you can push this product. But if you do come into a situation where you have let it dry up on you and you have found yourself with a high spot, that is easily solved. We take a little bit of the product and we re-emulsify the area. But I have dried coating here, especially if I catch it within a reasonable amount of time, I can go ahead and just re-emulsify the area, reactivate the product and go ahead and buff it off with the microfiber. 
Again, box out my area. Wow, immediately I can feel even just on buff off how much more slick that is. Really nice. A really nice, easy takeoff. It's starting to get a little, so I think I'm gonna have to change towel soon. I think this towel might be done. So you'll notice like initially when an initial takeoff, it's a little bit grabby because the surface is wet. So, you know, that makes sense. But uh, after that initial wipe, the kind of the flip and the buff is very nice, very slick, very easy, minimal effort, not breaking too much of a sweat here. So this is a good thing. I like to do the transom last. That's the way I've always done it. You know, hey, to each their own free will and all that kind of stuff. So let's get to it. Again, at this point, I really don't need to add a lot because this is pretty well saturated here. Now, one other thing I just want to point out before any boaters start commenting below. Uh, yeah, I know my boat is set up super half-assed listing over to the starboard side on my trailer. That's fine because it's just going to go right back in the water. It's going to sit right here until tomorrow and then I'm going to put it back in the water. So yes, were I actually trailering my boat somewhere of distance more than 200 feet, we would have done it better. Just wanted to point that out. All right, everyone, thanks for tuning in to the Dr. Beasley's YouTube channel. Please do remember to smash that like button and tickle the notification bell so you can be notified the next time we drop a video. What was the prescription today, folks, for my 208 Grady White from 2007, nearly 15 years old? Well, I mean, let's look at this glossiness, this mirror that I'm standing right in front of right here compared to what we started with right above me, or above this rub rail. You see this matteness right here? Well, that's what we started with. Here's what we ended up with right here. So it was NSP95. That is our fine cut uh, uh, nano surface primer, along with my Flex Super Beast HDO blue pad. And then finally our protection step was our Boat Coat Pro. And, and through the uh, application on this 20 foot boat, we did uh, rub rail to water line. We used just over two ounces of product. So it was a super efficient application. Uh, and time-wise you saw how fast I was able to move through this. So again, we hope you enjoy this. We hope you enjoy Boat Coat Pro. Make your own video put it out there let's and tag us in it let's see what else uh, you guys are doing with Boco Pro and our nano surface primers when it comes to marine uh, you know I think it's an underutilized tool for marine we know it how fantastic it is on contemporary automotive paint but I'm, I'm here to get the word out let's preach people NSP is on gel coat let's get some gloss sauce on these boats that are out on this lake and I do want to remind everyone there are rules of the water I guess it's not rules of the road, so I guess it'd be rules of the water. So in that same vein as my usual closing, I would like to say this. When you are on the water and you are piloting your watercraft and you're heading towards another watercraft, please remember to pass port to port. That's the way we want to do it, folks. Port to port. Thank you very much, everyone. Safe boating. <laughs>